So, well, I left my Bible at home. I know exactly where it is, but it's at home. So I have my phone, but we'll see how we go. Just a short one. I was going to, you know, I want you to be pleasing to God, and you are because he delights in you. You are irresistibly loving, lovable to him. He is, you know, like he just loves you. But one way to please him, it's one thing to be loved, but it's another to please. Does anyone recognise the difference? Yes. As I can remember, my grandfather, um, he had six children, and uh, one of his sons only ever turned up, one of my uncles only ever turned up to ask to borrow something. So he, my grandfather loved him like he loved all his children. He loved him. But when my uncle turned up, it was that sigh of disappointment. And I wonder what he wants now, yeah. knowing that it wasn't about a relationship with his own father. So, um, we, you know, we are so loved by God and we love him back. We can only love him because he first loved us. And again, sometimes I feel my English is so inadequate. But if we truly want to please him, it's a life of faith. And so we are a supernatural race. We are that supernatural race. You're no longer a human being. We're talking, we'll be talking about this for some time. You're, a, you're another race. You're not a human race anymore. You're another race. You're a, um, a supernatural from a supernatural race. You're in Christ. You're one with him. Uh, and, and this is all part of the Goshen lifestyle. We're talking about a sanctuary of sacredness and a sanctuary of safety, which is what Goshen is about or Goshen or whatever you want. But it's a sanctuary of sacredness, which, in, which causes the Lord to be a habitation for us, um, but also safety for us so that um, we're safe one with another. We recognise that love is behind everything and if we make a mistake or a miscommunication, love's going to sort it out. So we are spiritual beings having a human experience. We are not human beings having a spiritual experience. You are born again, brand new creation in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. All things have become new. You are brand new. And so recognising in this that when you got born again, like so many things happened when we got born again. One, the angels went berserk having a party at the salvation of a sinner. Like they just went to town. The other thing is that you were translated immediately out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. Yes. You were filled with the Holy Ghost the minute you got born again. Jesus later baptised us in the Holy Ghost and fire. So all of these amazing things happened. You were given everything that you needed for a new creation. And sometimes we're told that, you know, like you, you were given everything that you need to be that mature Christian is in you. And just like a baby's born with their internal organs and everything, but it needs to grow. Everything you got from God was mature. It was full. It was, it was full. The only thing that needs to mature is our mind. We need to understand the ways of God, but everything he gave us, he didn't. He doesn't scrimp. Right, he's not a scrimping God. He's generous to a, f well, I can't even say to a fault with God, can I? But he's generous, right? And so we've got this brand new creation and he's just given us everything with Jesus and he withholds nothing from us whatsoever, nothing from those who walk uprightly. But because of Jesus Christ, we qualify as those who walk uprightly. He fulfills the law. But then, you know, then in Romans 12, 3, it says he's given us the measure of faith. So the faith we've been given is his, his faith. It's not your faith, Karen. It's his faith, his faith, which means it can't, it, it, it's impossible for that to fail. The only way faith will fail is if my mind gets involved and tells me that, oh, you know, you might not have the faith for this or you've got little faith or shipwrecked faith or maybe your faith's not great enough for this. But that's my mind telling my spirit um, and taking control over my spirit. That's not about that. We live by the spirit and I live by the faith of the Son of God. So Galatians 2.20 is interesting because it says that we've died with Christ. Oh, sometimes I need a greater revelation of that. But, you know, we died, with, crucified with Christ and it's no longer we who live but Christ lives in us. And we live by the faith of the Son of God. Now, a lot of translations will tell you we live by the faith in the Son of God. But King James says we live by the faith of the Son of God, which means we live by Jesus' faith, his faith. How can that fail? 
We live by his faith. And so we've got this amazing thing called faith, which causes us to rise above the things of the world. People in the world have natural faith. They know if they sit on a chair, it's going to hold their weight. And then if they turn on an electric light switch, it's going to work. They might even have faith in dif different things, but it's natural faith. We've been given a supernatural faith from a supernatural God to live a supernatural lifestyle to bring supernatural outcomes because we're of a different race, supernatural race. And he said in Hebrews 11, verse 6, it's, you know, that the way to please him is by faith. So we want to please him. But in these days, there's a lot of talk, and it's understandable because God is bringing in the apostolic and the prophetic, and they're coming, he's teaching us to, to work together. But if faith is not the underlying foundation, then we're still going to fall short in the natural, or in the, you know what I mean? We need to understand what faith is and how it is and how it works. Faith speaks. Faith is a gift from God. Jesus is the author of it, the beginner of it. He's the end of it, the finisher of it. He's just saying, Jesus is saying, you know what? God's given you the measure of faith. It starts in me. It ends in me. I'm just asking you to use it. Yes. Just use it, right? Just use it. And, and faith speaks. Faith speaks. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, not sure of the verse, but 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it says that we have the same spirit of faith and thereby we speak. So faith speaks, but faith is the only way to please God. It is the only way to please him. And so it's recognizing that four times in the Bible, Habakkuk 2, 4, Romans 1, 17, Galatians 3.11 and Hebrews 10.38, it says that the just will live by faith. The just will live by faith. When I first got born again, I used my faith for the big things. You know, something happened, oh, I need to release my faith. But where to live by it? When you live by something, it's like a breath. I live by air, by oxygen. Mm. So faith is like oxygen to us in the spiritual realm. We live by faith. Habakkuk 2.4, Romans 1.17, Galatians 3.11, Hebrews 10.38. And the Hebrews actually use, they don't use the word faith, they use the word trust. Trust. Daniel, are you putting the scriptures up? Blessing. I don't need my Bible. I've got that. Thank you. <laughs> so Hebrews 11.6, please. Oh, my gosh. I don't pay you enough. <laughs> so without faith, it's impossible to please and be satisfactory to him. For whoever would come near to God must believe that God exists and he is the rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him. So without faith, it's impossible to please him. So we're to live by this, this amazing gift of faith. And in Luke 137, it says, with God, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. So if nothing is impossible, when I think something is impossible, I'm limiting the Holy One of Israel. Is that Psalm 78? But I'm limiting the Holy One. So nothing is impossible with God. In fact, if it says impossible, if you separate the I am and the possible and put an apostrophe, I apostrophe M space possible, it's actually saying I'm possible. I'm possible in faith. I'm possible. And so it's, it's, it's just faith is the most extraordinary gift. And with all the talk of the apostles and the prophets and the coming together and, and the prophecies that are being given out by prophets and all of the amazing things that happen, sometimes we forget about faith. Ignorance, unbelief, doubt block faith. When we ask questions like, well, God, I was believing for it, but it hasn't happened, it shows that we're not in faith. The soul's taken over. There's a question. It's okay to question God. Okay to question. He doesn't mind questions, but we've got to stay in the spirit, recognising that there is an answer that will rebuild the faith, or doesn't need rebuilding, it's his, but will release it again, a fresh and anew throughout your being. So with God, nothing is impossible. Faith actually brings heaven to earth. You stop and think about it. Faith brings heaven to earth. Um, because it was by faith, it was grace through faith that I was saved. 
which translated me out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. Faith brings heaven to earth. Faith reveals God in all of his wonder and faith uh, operates the forgiveness. At, uh, faith operates at the frequency of divinity. Faith is a frequency of God in the spirit realm and it operates in the realm of divinity, not humanity. So in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, it says that greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. Greater is he. Greater is Jesus Christ in me or greater is the Holy Spirit in me than anybody, Satan, any, any demonic spirit, any, any person in authority or, or, or whatever. He, greater is he that is in me. So anytime you step into a situation or a circumstance, greater is he that's in me than he that's in this situation, than he that's in the world. Greater is he that's in me. And in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, it says, and this is the victory that overcomes the world. I've probably forgotten the first part of the verse. For whatever is born of God, I figure if I'm a whoever, I'm a whatever, mm. right? For whatever is born of God, I'm born of God, is victorious over the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, even our faith. So whatever it is in the world system, whatever it is in the world that's coming against you, doesn't matter what it is, sickness, disease, unemployment, lack of funds, doesn't matter what it is coming against you, the victory that you have that overcomes the world is faith. Faith means you're never stuck. Faith means you're never, you're never trapped in a corner. Faith means you're never overwhelmed. Faith means that there's no way out. Faith means that you ha always have the answer. Faith means that there is the door. Faith is the door. Jesus is the door. But you go through the door of faith and, and it is with, it's the victory that overcomes. So if faith is the victory, I need to make sure that I'm living in faith because this is the victory that overcomes the world. Yeah. Nothing is too big. If our faith can raise the dead, it can do anything. Joshua, Old Testament, by faith, ask God to keep the sun still. Don't let the sun move, right? That seems pretty impossible. Old Testament, it happened. How much more in the new? Hezekiah, I want the shadow to move backwards. All these amazing things. Throw, throw a wooden, throw the stick in the river and the axe head will rise to the surface. Faith, you know, so faith is important. You want to see the, the miraculous, the amazing, the wonderful. It's operating by faith. It's living by faith. It's knowing that it's the master key that, that turns every situation, every circumstance, everything around because faith is the master key that overcomes the world. Nothing can stop your faith except your soul. No demonic power, nothing. It's the battlefield is the mind. It's if the mind gets in the way, that's the issue. And so it's the master key to a world of victory. And we are to live by faith. If I'm living by faith, that means I'm seeing like God does or seeing like Jesus does. I'm thinking like him. I'm talking like him. I'm acting like him. Because by faith, I'm seeing what God is seeing. I might be looking at a dead body, but God sees it raised from the dead. I might be looking at my bank statement, which doesn't have much in it, but God sees provision and abundance. I might be looking at, at, to at fractured relationships, but God sees healing and restoration of toxic relationships. You know, I might be looking at things in the natural, but it's how God sees it and how God sees it is by faith. So we've got to start seeing by faith, listening by faith, talking by faith, acting by faith, because we are to live by faith. And as you live by faith, you are as powerful as you're sure. You are so powerful. If you could see yourselves in the realm of the spirit, if you could see the power that you carry, the authority that is within you, if you could see yourselves the way God sees you, if I could introduce you to who you are the way the Father sees you, you would be blown away because it's nothing like the way we see ourselves. So, you know, you need to talk to Father and say, Father, would you please introduce me to me the way you see me? Because I see me through the traumas I've been through, through the experiences I've had. I've seen me in a certain way, but I want to see me the way you see me. And I know you see me in Christ, but how exactly do you see me? How exactly do you see me, Father? Because that's the me I want to be. If you could just see that for yourselves in the spirit realm. If I could just introduce you 
to who you are in the realm of the spirit, you would never be the same. Unrecognizable to the people around you. But exactly the way Father wants you to be. You are amazing. You are amazing, awesome, wonderful sons and daughters of the Most High. Wow. You know, just like you can't find words to describe Father, sometimes you can't find words to describe who you are. You're that awesome. You're that amazing. You're that steeped in Christ. You're immersed in the spirit flowing in the river of God. You know, you can step into the spiritual realm and see the constellations. You can raise the dead, cast out demons. You can turn businesses around. You can start your own business. You can do anything. Uh, with faith, all things are possible. Nothing is impossible with God. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. So the... And, and, you know, you are as powerful as God because he's given you the authority of Jesus Christ. You are not God. Let me make that very clear. You are not God and you are not Jesus. But you are in Jesus and Jesus is in you. And he has given you his authority. You have a power of eternity. Attorney. Maybe I was wrong in saying you're as powerful as God, but you are the same as Jesus. You're a joint heir with Jesus Christ. And you are an heir of God, which means everything God has, you have available to you. Everything. He withholds nothing. You are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Everything Jesus has and is and does, you have. That's Romans chapter 8, verse 17. And so we've got this amazing, you know, faith causes you to, to act like Yeshua, to speak like him, to do what he does. And some people will say, oh, you're so bold or you're so arrogant or who do you think you are? I've had a couple of people ask me who I am. And I said, would you like me to tell you? <laughs> because I'm happy to tell you. I'm a daughter of the Most High. I'm the salt of the earth. I'm the light of the world. I'm a temple of the Holy Ghost. I've got the power of Christ living in me. I'm a part of a royal family. I'm, I'm a member of the household of God. Do you really want me to tell you who I am? Because if you mess with me, you mess with heaven. So shall we get back to business? I will not allow myself to be trampled upon or oppressed. I will surrender in humility. But I will not allow myself to be oppressed or depressed or talking to by, you know, demonic spirits and powers working through people. So if they want to know who you are, tell them. Tell them. You want to know who I am? By the grace of God, I am who I am. Simply by his grace. I got saved by faith through grace. I belong to him. You know, you mess with me, you mess with him. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. We need to know who we are. Jesse Duplantis, when he goes to the doctor, and they said to him, any heart disease or cancer in your family? And yes, there is. But he says, no, there isn't, because he's got a new bloodline now. He's got a bloodline that comes from the Father. He's got a divine DNA. The bloodline is Jesus Christ. And so, no, there's no, actually nothing in the family, my family, there's nothing like that. I live in divine health. Perfect health, great health, whatever you want. But it's by faith. And it comes as a revelation. Don't go thinking that because you've got the idea that that's faith. Faith coming out of here is just information. Faith comes from your spirit. It comes out of there. When it comes out of your, your spirit, man, it comes out with authority. It comes out with power. It comes out with results. Don't go thinking because you know a scripture that that is faith. Faith is not that. Faith is living by a revelation. Faith is living by the power of the anointing. Faith is um, living by the, what God is showing you. You know, it's not by information. It doesn't matter how many scriptures you've memorized or I've memorized. It doesn't matter. It's, it's the revelation. It's what I carry in my spirit. That's what faith is. Faith operates from the spirit, not from the soul, not from the head, not from intellect, not from that sub, that's secondary. It's always from the spirit. It is the only way to please God, but it is unstoppable. Stop and think about it. Lazarus had been dead for four days. Nothing could stop him from being raised from the dead. Faith is unstoppable. The woman with the issue of blood for 12 years 
had looked for healing and had only gotten worse and given all the money to the doctors and only gotten worse. One touch of the master's hem. Because she had got the revelation that if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'm going to be made whole. One touch and instantly healed. Faith is unstoppable. The only way it's stopped is when our soul interferes. Stay in the spirit. Stay in the spirit. John 1, 12 to 13 is, I love this. I cannot get off this. This is like, this is such a foundation of who you are as a son and a daughter of a supernatural race. John chapter 1, verses 12 to 13 talks about the fact that we were born by God himself. But uh, to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave them the authority, the power, the privilege, um, the right to become children of God. That is to those who believe, adhere to, trust in and rely on his name. Danny, I think it might be... No, it's John 1. Try verse 13. That's it. Who um, owe their birth, we owe our birth, not to blood nor to the will of the flesh or physical impulse, nor to the will of man, like a, that of a natural father, but we owe our birth to God. We have been born of God. God, he's my dad. Not just adopted into a family, but he, he, he's my real dad. You know, when you get that revelation that he's your real dad, I've been born again by God, by, by God the Father. You know, like I might have been born in the natural as Suzette by, by Joyce and, and Clem Hind. Mum's name is Colleen, so I was struggling with the C's. Colleen, that's not Dad's name. Um, but, you know, I, I, that's not who I am now. I'm born again. I was born again by God. He's our dad. He's our Abba. Like how amazing is that? Like that, that's just... Past incredible. And so when you get this revelation that you have been born, born again of God, you are this spiritual being, this supernatural being. You're, a, you're a, of a different race. A different race. A different race. We need to get the revelation that you are no longer human, but you are spiritual. You are born again. You are a different race. You're a supernatural being born of God the Father. That's what the Word says. That's what the Word says. Isn't it awesome? Isn't it awesome? So when we say that we take on the DNA of our Father, I take on the DNA of Abba. His bloodline runs through my bloodline now. His bloodline cleanses my bloodline now. His DNA is my DNA now. Oh, pray that you get this revelation. So when I got born again, the power of faith means that it converted me to a son or a daughter of people to a son or a daughter of the Most High God. Faith converted us from a human race to a supernatural race, to a spiritual race. Faith converted us from humanity to spirituality. Faith did that. Faith changed my citizenship. I am a member of the, I'm Australian citizen in the natural, but in reality, I'm a citizen of heaven. And God gave me a visa to be born in this nation because he wanted me here for his reason, for his purpose. But I'm a citizen of heaven first and foremost. That is my allegiance. I swear my allegiance to my King Jesus. I swear my allegiance to him, to his kingdom. And secondarily, I will be loyal to the place where he's put me. But we are first and foremost citizens of heaven. Allegiance to the King of Kings. The power of faith translated us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the Son of God's love, like whoosh, faith just lifted us straight out, whoosh, just immediate, like nanosecond. Born again, no longer in the kingdom of darkness, straight into the power of the kingdom of the Son of God's love. How amazing is that? Faith raises us up. 
because we're in the resurrection life now. Resurrection life of Christ lives within us. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Resurrection life lives within me. But now, by faith, I've ascended. Ephesians 2, 6. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. Faith causes me to ascend. Hallelujah. Faith is so powerful. God says we ought to live by it, not just rely upon it for the situations where we need faith. It is, to, it is as important as the air that I breathe. God bring, uh, faith brings God's power, his presence, his power, his everything to bear in the situations and circumstances I'm involved in. Faith releases the presence of God, the power of God, the, uh, the love of God, the gifts of God, whatever I need. Faith releases that into the situations and circumstances. Do you know what faith does because it pleases God? It provokes God to action. God sees faith and he says, oh, I love it. That pleases me. Look at that. That pleases me. So he moves in favour. It provokes him to action on our behalf. Oh, my gosh. Isn't faith amazing? Unstoppable, unconquerable. It is amazing in its outworking in our lives. And faith releases his power. We are to live. We are all justified by, by God, by the the. Sacrifice of Jesus, we've been justified just as if we'd never sinned. And we live by faith. And in Luke, I've just got scriptures, Luke 8, 48, faith heals and makes whole. It heals you by faith, I'm healed. By faith, I live in divine health. By faith, I'm made whole. And this is um, the woman with the issue of blood. Jesus said to her daughter, your faith... Your, your trust in me has made you well. Go in peace, untroubled, undisturbed well-being, wholeness. Faith heals, faith makes whole. It's exactly what it does. And the Hebrews use the word trust instead of faith. So in the Jewish Complete Bible, every time the word faith is used in my Bible, they use the word trust, which I sometimes find easier to get my head around. I can trust God, I trust his promises, where I have faith. Sometimes that's a bit nebulous. What exactly is it? How does it work? What does it look like? But trust is easier for our Western mind to get hold of. So faith brings healing and makes us whole. Look at that. Faith gives you untroubled, undisturbed well-being. 2 Corinthians 1.24. We stand in faith. I am standing in faith. So it's not that we were, not that we have dominion over you and lord it over your faith, and but rather that we work with you um, as fellow labourers to promote your joy. For in your faith, in your strong and welcome conviction and belief that Jesus is the Messiah, um, through whom we obtain eternal salvation in the kingdom of God, you stand firm. I stand firm in faith. Romans chapter 5, verse 2, I think it is, also says that I stand in the grace of God. So I stand in faith and grace. And what did I get saved by? Faith and grace. But I stand in it. In the, in the spiritual realm, can you see yourself standing firm in faith? I stand firm in faith. I stand in the grace of God. That means the favour of God's just released all over me like God can't help himself. He just graces me. He graces me. He favours me. But I stand firm. I stand firm. It doesn't mean that I titter or totter, but I stand firm. Romans uh, 5 2, there you go. We have access by faith into this grace in which we firmly and safely stand. And let us rejoice and exult uh, in our, can't read it, in our hope of experiencing and enjoying the glory of God. But you stand in these things. If that is my foundation, how can I be rocked off? How can I be knocked off? How can I, you know, I'm immovable. Like, honestly, we've got to get the revelation. We live in an unshakable kingdom, don't we? Nothing can shake the kingdom of God. Now, there's a lot of stuff around me that can be shaken. But if I'm in Christ and Christ is in me, I am unshakable. Because I'm in the unsha- I am in the unshakable king of an unshakable kingdom. So when I get shaken, shooked, when I, you know, how did that happen? What's going on there? I'm not exactly standing firm in faith. 
If I'm in Christ and he is an unshakable king in an unshakable kingdom, I am unshakable. Yes. Revelation. Spend time in the word. What, what scriptures are the Lord bringing to you for you to meditate, for you to get a revelation from, for you to feed on, for you to draw the juice out, for you to, to live from? What is he showing you? Everybody's on a different part of a journey, but it's what the word does. It's, it's how the word feeds us. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Look, I got born close to 50 years ago. Back in the day <laughs> when Fred Price was on our TV screens. I don't know if anybody remembers Fred Price. He's still preaching today. But he was on TV and he was given a shameful uh, first time in Australia. He was dishonoured shamefully because he's um, preaching, preaching, bringing the word of faith, which was a little bit kind of new at that stage. But he's bringing the word of faith and he's preaching, looking at the people. And the pastors that had combined to bring him were seated on the stage behind him. And as he's preaching, they're shaking their heads at the people going, no, no. So he's preaching the truth of God's word and the pastors behind him are going, no. So he never came back. He never came back. But he was on TV and I got every one of his tapes, his little tapes, because I just loved his teaching. But his um, motto for his, or his motto, his, ours is, you know, bringing heaven to earth. His was, we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. So 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk by faith. We regulate our life by faith. We conduct ourselves by our conviction, our belief, our faith, our uh, What's that word? Respecting man's relationship to God and divine things which, with trust and holy fervour. And we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. But how many times is that reversed in our lives? Somebody upsets us, somebody says something, something happens at work. Finances don't work out the way they think we should. We've been to the doctor's report and got a report that or something happens and all of a sudden we're walking by sight and not by faith and we've reverted back to the old man instead of living out of the new man. So we walk by faith and not by sight. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says that we are saved through faith by grace. Saved by grace through faith. So grace and faith always work together. God is always equipping us, gracing us, favouring us as we walk in faith. Saved through faith by grace. Um, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. So faith is unstoppable. Faith is unbeatable. It's unquenchable. It is the most amazing thing. It's unquenchable. We live by faith and not by sight. So sometimes when I feel affected by something, I'll, I'll stop and say, wait a minute. Faith would not make me feel this way. Faith would have hope, joy, peace, and the assurance of victory. Faith would say, well, it doesn't matter what it looks like. There's an answer. So if I'm feeling upset, a little bit rattled, okay, I'm walking by sight. I just need to stop. I need to regroup. I need to come back to Christ. I need to come back to the truth. Um, Ephesians 2, 8, for it is by, by, by free grace, by God's unmerited favour. Let me go over this side. That you are saved and delivered from judgment, made a partaker of Christ's salvation through faith. So we are saved by grace through faith. And this salvation is not of ourselves. We can't, it's not of our own doing. It came not through our own striving, but it is the gift of God. So anytime we strive, anytime we try to make things happen, you are not in the spirit, you're in the old man. So there needs to be a clear demarcation of old man, new man. Humanity or God's race of being, which one are we going to be? So recognising it's a process, 
It's going to take time for my mind to be renewed. It's going to take time for my soul to be healed of things that have affected me, maybe of traumas to be released. But when we come into the, rec the revelation of who we are in Christ, man, you're unbeatable. You're unconquerable. You are immovable. You are impregnable in Christ. It's just amazing. Verse 9, love, please. Not because of works, not because of the fulfillment of law's demands, lest anyone should boast. It's not the result of what anyone can possibly do. That No one can pride himself in it or take glory. It's all about what God has done for us and in us and through us and with us and around us. Amen. We are saved by grace through faith. And let me just finish with this in Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 2, no, Ephesians 6, verse 16. Ephesians 6, verse 16. It says, Lift up over all the covering shield of saving faith, upon which you can quench all the firing, flaming missiles of the wicked one. You will quench every yes. flaming missile. Yes. Not one gets through the shield of faith. Isn't that an amazing concept? You know, we talk about fiery arrows, arrows in the back, spears in the back and all of this kind of stuff. But as you lift up over all the covering shield of saving faith, it quenches every, every, all fiery darts of the enemy. Everything. But, it, it, but they get through if we don't really believe that. You know, so, you know, no, I've got this covering shield of saving faith and it covers me front, back, sideways, it covers me. I don't care what the picture's about what the Roman soldiers wore, that I'm wearing the covering shield of saving faith and it covers me and it quenches every fiery dart of the enemy. Anything that the enemy could flow at me, fling at me, toss at me, hurl at me, it's quenched, it's put out, it's obliterated, it's stopped. It's the shield of faith. And sometimes I've had to put the shield of faith between me and people. Because it just wasn't, I just needed that protection. So I don't know if any of you remember, but a witch came into one of our meetings at the Madhubar State School Hall. We were there. And she came in and she came up after the meeting and she said, and my, and my stuff was going off. And she said to me, I know that, um, I know that you're humble. And I know that you love God. And I just, I've got a word for you from God. And I believe that he's told me that because of your humility, you will accept it. And I went, not on your Nelly, not on your Nelly. So some of the women in the back who, in the church who had recognized what was going on, they're in the back interceding for me. In the, and I'm standing there and I just went, uh, in, in my head or in my heart, I went, I put, the shave, I put the saving shield of faith between me and this woman. Mm. Jesus stands between me and her. And so she's ready to give her word. And she said, was, oh, I'm having trouble connecting with the spirit. Mm. Too right. Because <laughs> I'm not having that spirit speaking to me. And she said, oh, I'm having trouble speaking with the spirit. I just can't. Oh, do you mind if I come back and give this to you at another time? Mm. Never saw her again. Yes. But it's recognising that there are times when people speak to you and the spirit behind them is operating through them, that you will need that, that saving shield of covering faith because it quenches everything. Everything. All things. Quenches all the arrows. Quenches all the arrows. So you're an invis in an invisible war. And sometimes, but, but that shield of faith crushes the things that come against you that shield of faith can return to the center the arrows that are released against you that shield of faith can pull down every word of accusation judgment condemnation oppression domination intimidation manipulation whatever kind of word it is it just bounces off that shield of faith and it can't penetrate your heart can't penetrate your soul can't penetrate your mind because you're covered by the covering shield of saving faith and those words when they hit that shield are quenched they lose their power. They lose their authority. They lose um, the, the, the demonic power behind them or the power of the flesh behind them. You, you've, we've really got to get an understanding of the power of faith in your life because you are to live by it, not just rely upon it in hard times, bad times. Oh, I'm feeling really, I really need faith. No, you're to live by it. It's the currency of, it's one of the currencies of heaven. You're to breathe faith. It's, it's you know, and in Hebrews chapter 11, 
verses 1 and 2. Hebrews 11, verses 1 and 2. Oh, Danielle, you're doing an excellent job with a new toy. Verse 1, faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for. It's the proof. It's the proof of things that we do not see. It's the conviction of their reality because faith perceives as a real fact what is not revealed to the senses. There's a clear line there between spirit and soul. Verse 2, it says, For by faith, by trust and a holy fervour born of faith, the men of old had divine testimony born to them and obtained a good report. So anytime you live by faith, there's a good report. There's a testimony. Something's happened, you know. So anytime that you're feeling, I haven't got many testimonies to share, it's a sure sign that maybe we're not operating by faith. Because faith brings a testimony. Faith brings a good report. Faith brings a change. Faith brings something supernatural. Faith is the answer. Faith comes from Jesus Christ. He's the author. He's the finisher of it. It's the gift of God. It is unstoppable. It's unquenchable. It is powerful in the way that it, it looks after us, affects us. We stand in it. We can walk in it. There's even a scripture says, I think, that we can run with faith. It's just the most amazing gift of God. And we, we were actually blessed with it. Like, isn't God? God amazing to give us the gift of faith and he says but you know what you, I want you to use this gift because if you use something that I give you it pleases me right it pleases me so sometimes and again I learned this from my friend Elizabeth who turned 89 yesterday she I got a, a revelation yeah 89 <laughs> it's not her delay, it's, it's the thingy. <laughs> but the, um, she got a revelation about favour, that God had given her favour. And so every morning in her prayer time, she saw favour as a gift and that God gave her a fresh gift of favour every day. So every morning she would, she would imagine herself receiving the gift of favour from his hands. And then she would say, oh, Father, thank you. You've wrapped this so beautifully. I'm just going to unwrap it now. So she would see herself undoing the bow and, and unwrapping the paper and examining the gift of favour from all different angles. And I think we need to do the same with faith. Father, thank you for the gift of faith. Thank you that you've given it to us. Thank you that it's, it's new. Father, thank you that it originates in Yeshua, that it ends in Yeshua. And I'm simply the bridge between the beginning and the end. I just have to release it. And I release it by my words. Father, thank you for the gift of faith. It's my shield. It it quenches everything that comes against me. Thank you for the gift of faith. I can stand in it. I can walk in it. It's with me all the time. Thank you. Thank you. If I say something wrong. You guys are inside my head right now. Sorry. <laughs> I've been substituting Yeshua in for faith. So okay. You said the rest. Yeah. So, because so, sometimes I know I get my words muddled, I get excited, my English gets tixed, mixed up with my tongues, and nothing comes out the way it should. But, um, but you know, it's just, isn't God so amazingly generous to us? Yes. yes. Amen. And so, to thank Him for this gift of faith, thank you, thank you that I actually live by the faith of the Son of God. I live by Yeshua's faith. It's not even mine; it's His. Oh, my goodness, thank you. You know, and you do a study of faith. Look at it. It's the most beautiful gift. But First John 5, 4, it is the master key that overcomes the world, even my faith. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. And I can't pray for... Anything like, I could, you know, and there's so many scriptures like faith is a mustard seed, right? All these other scriptures, there's so many scriptures about faith. And I can't even pray for it really because it comes from him. But Father God, we just want to thank you for the gift of faith. We thank you for the covering shield of saving faith, which quenches every fiery dart of the enemy. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for faith. Thank you for the gift of faith. Thank you that it, 
Yeshua is the originator and Yeshua is the finisher. He finishes it like we would finish furniture. Oh, gosh, Lord, you're so good to us. We thank you that we stand in it, we walk in it, we live by faith. Thank you for the precious gift. Thank you. Thank you. Russell, are you ready? Just on a lighter note, just well, on a lighter note, but I was assistant pastor in a church in Brizzy and the pastor was Swedish. His accent was a little bit different. And so whenever he read Ephesians 6, 16, it was always um, that it would quench, couldn't get his tongue around that either, but all the, the fluffy darts of the enemy. <laughs> So Russell's just going to do communion for us. <laughs> Father God, I just pray that if any... Pl oh, look, Lord, you know what we need. We just come before you and thank you for meeting every need. You just meet every need. Yeah. We thank you. We don't have to ask for it because you know what we need before we even ask. Thank you. Thank you for your grace, your generosity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.